Good evening. Can everyone hear me? Good evening, everyone. We're going to get started with the evening. So if everyone can have a seat. Welcome and thank you. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? OK. I'm going to give these folks a chance to get in and have a seat. I'm going to go ahead and get started because I think some of those folks are, are talking out there. But welcome, everyone. I'm Stephanie Coleman. I am the current director of the Martin Luther King Center. Um, I just wanted to offer gratitude to everyone for taking the time to come out tonight and braving the elements and uh, express my gratitude and I'll give you a warm welcome. Um, you all coming here just shows how important this community feels the center is. Um, this $11 million investment is a once in a lifetime opportunity for this community, the center, this neighborhood. Um, with that being said, it's important that we gather information from the community and that we pull together your ideas and your dreams and help build it, build the dream together. Um, we're also hoping that you'll go and ex spread this out to your family and your friends and get them involved as well. There are many ways that you can get involved. Um, we're gonna have two more meetings here at the center February 10th, March 10th at 6 p.m. Um, that we'll do that are, they're going to be ex built on to these meetings, but if it's the first time, that's okay. Um, we're also going to have um, surveys that we're hoping that you and many others will fill out online. Um, the web the web ad web address for that is southbendin.gov slash build the dream. Um, so we're just hoping that everybody everybody gets involved, um, that we can spread this word. I think that um, we've got a presence online, presence on Facebook. You can get updates on that website, um, meeting information, and again the survey, which is really what I'm driving, is that we get many, as many people as possible to fill, to complete the survey, so we can really hear your input and know what it is that you'd like to see um, in the new center. And thanks again for coming out tonight. Good evening, everyone. The question right off the bat, I love the energy. It's beautiful. I love it. Keep it coming. But the question is, are we going to be renovating this building or building a new building based off of the money that's in the budget that it's been allocated for? And the answer is there will be a new building with the money that's being provided as a budget. Yes, sir. Okay. So with that being said, I love tough questions right at the beginning. Gets the blood flowing, gets, gets the energy going. But my name, I'll stay in front of the camera for the virtual crew. My name is Damon Hewlin, and I am with Meticulous Design Architecture. We are an uh, all African-American owned architectural design firm. We are a global firm. And 
we, we are a global firm, so we have our primary office in Indianapolis, Indiana, but we also have an office overseas in Abu Dhabi. So most people know of uh, Dubai, but we have an office there as well. And we've become a part of this team, uh, which is a great world-class team with this city to provide you with a world-class dream center. Another question, yes. We are going to do our best to be as inclusive as possible. We don't have all the answers for every issue today or all the answers for who the contractors will be, the subcontractors, uh, but we have a very diverse design team, which is the start of the process. And the city has been very intentional for ensuring we're following an inclusive process. I definitely understand the concern. So for the for the virtual to help grow the second district. That's been the problem. All the money that come into the second district, leave the second district, it doesn't come back. There's no grocery stores here, which you don't, I'm just giving you the lowdown. There's no grocery stores, there's no cleaners, there's no pharmacies, there's nothing, nothing. And we're talking about spending $11 million. That's our money, that's our tax dollar. And we need to get a return on our tax dollar, make it residual. This money must grow here if we are to survive. Valid. And so those things need to be in your mind. It must be in your mind. We pay the biggest amount of tax. Second district is one of the biggest districts in the city of South Bend, but yet one of the underserved districts in Canada. So we need some insurance. We don't need any more revenue. We right. must have a shore. That's right. We must have it. And we demand it. I am. I don't know what the rest of you are. I am. I grew up over here. I moved to the west side in 1962, and I've seen it fall all the way down to where it is now. The last pair came through, so a thousand houses down with no plan. We have a plan now. This is our area, and it's going to be right from this day forward. That's my point. I don't know about the way y'all are. But that is my bill. We're tired of being in the second class. We're a class people. Agreed. And that is the purpose why we have you here. Thank you. 
and we're going to take this small fight, but we're going to build off of this fight. No more. It's, it's our time, people. It's our time that we got to step forward and take our time. Right. No longer let somebody tell us what we have or what they're going to give us. No, we're going to tell you what we want and what we're going to get. Well, all I can say to that is amen, and everybody give a round of applause. Amen. It, look, the reason we're here tonight, and the reason why we're not simply creating some pretty picture and putting it up here in front of you and just saying, here, this is what you're going to get, is because of exactly that. It's, an, it's the approach to engage in a diverse, inclusive way to engage the community to hear your voice for what you want. A part of what we're doing tonight is to hear your voice. We're not up here to give a presentation to dictate everything for what you, what we think you need, as opposed to hearing exactly from your hearts passionately what is it that you want to see, not just for the center, but how the center can be transformational for this community. So that is the purpose, and we're grateful for each and every one of you coming out to share that with us this evening. So again, this isn't to be some long drawn out presentation. We have a few slides, but we want a majority of what we focus on this evening is to be respectful to everything that you say there uh, sticky notepads on the each of the tables with pens. Hopefully there are several pens uh, that you can begin to share right so that we can take back from this event. The heart of everyone here and what you're representing for your community this evening. So. Right now, this is just a slide to show that th this is where we stand tonight. But there is a dream for a better site, a better park, a better facility, a campus, a dream campus that would be the start of transformation for this community, that it would be the start no, oh no, for this site, this, yeah, this, this site that we're on, this, yes, for this, this site where we are, this is the seed being planted by each of the voices and every each and every one of you and all that will hopefully continue to come out and participate in this process throughout this process to have you to have your voices to share on on yeah stand on that side yeah so just in brief introduction we have a project team that consists of meticulous as the lead design architect and interior design firm. We also have DLZ that will be providing engineering services. We also have uh, JT Consult who will be providing some code consultant services. We have VS Engineering also providing uh, some site civil uh, engineering services as well as our kitchen consultant and we also have the main focus, which is the, the city, the community at the heart of all of the focus for this project. Let so, me say something real quick. Anybody who's got a question throughout this process, we definitely, want to hear, we definitely want to hear your voices. So if you have a question, raise your hand and I'll bring the microphone over to you so we can all hear it. Thank you. So, and on your team, how many are from South Bend? Say it again. How many people are from South Bend? The team that you just how many named? people are like, you know, from the consultant the team out of the primary uh, two out of the three are primary for the, the major consultants? Yes, Matic, yes, yeah, South Bend. Yes, uh, South Bend. And meticulous is Indianapolis, but the the other DLZ and VS engineering are primary South Bend. Great question. So uh, this this image here was just to depict that we know that there's a there's a bigger 
there's a bigger impact to for this project than just the project itself. This project is going to be hope for a lot of people, a lot of uh, local businesses, a lot of the residences. So it's it's not just a project for us. So just to let you know, you know, uh, meticulous was selected because of our passion for the community. Our primary focus is to do work that is meaningful, purposeful, and impactful for communities that we, with the four partners are from. We have our partners from Gary, Indiana, uh, one from Indianapolis, but I'm from far the East Coast. I'm from New Jersey, but all of us are from underserved, underprivileged communities. I grew up in an apartment uh, in the projects where eight of my family members, we all lived in a one bedroom apartment. And we we struggle. So everything we do as a firm is to give back and to create world class architecture and design to transform and bring hope to communities. So we were selected because we're passionate about what we do and we're not going to come dictate anything to you. So you can just rest assured that that's what you have in this team. You might, you know, through the process, see me get choked up and shed a, a few tears because I care, because we care. And we're going to do everything we can do to fight for this center and this community. So the, the purpose uh, is a question. And what was it? What? The, I didn't. And VS Engineering. Yes. Yeah. And, and the, the three primary uh, consultants are uh, what we call XBE uh, firms, minority owned firms. Okay. The purpose of the project is to transform the King Center into a world class, intergenerational, community dream center campus, inspiring hope for us all. That again, I'll, I'll con we'll continue every presentation to come back to the purpose. It's to inspire, it's to build hope, it's to have something that touches all age ranges and, and do something that's special that every single person can be proud of. And at the end of the day, our desire is that each of you will have your fingerprint on what the outcome is for this project that every voice will be respected and heard and we can do something special together. So just briefly, the process that we'll go through, I'm sorry, question? Yeah. Hi, hello. Um, I would just like to know if uh, any of the board members are present, if they could stand please so that the community, so that we're made aware, that would be greatly appreciated. Any, any of the board members, if you're, present is one. Thank you. For the. The ah, OK, OK, yeah, the community advisory or action group, all of those members, please stand. Thirteen. Do you see that as a problem that only two people is here out of thirteen? There, no, there are three, but we have, I think, some online as well. But this evening is is not for them. They, they, so uh, across the community, if, if I can speak, it, it's important. I sit on okay. various of boards. It is important when you're bringing this process to the community. I'm a West Side baby, born and raised down the street. Grandparents own their homes. So to me, it's important to know who the board members are so that when we do have questions and concerns, we know who to hold accountable and who to bring those questions to. So, I 
I was unable to bring the list of CAG members tonight, but we do have many of them in the room. Oh, we do have many in the room. And also we have many who were invited by CAG members. We have some online as well. I was reluctant to post that information online because I don't want people reaching out to those volunteer members personally. Those questions should be directed more towards city administration. So you can direct any questions regarding engagement or the process or who's on the on the board, uh, which I will make public on our website so you can keep uh, keep an eye out for that. This is a part of the process. Yes. Who are so, you? What is your name? Me? Yes. Hi. My name is Alkina Aldrich. Okay. I'm the city's director of engagement and economic empowerment. I'm representing the departments of community investment. I'm a little out, out of order here, but we have 13 members in the CAG. The CAG has been meeting with us in prior meetings. In fact, the last meeting we had, they were able to organize about 40 extra folks to come in the room and help us get to these guiding principles that we want to be able to talk with you through tonight as well. Um, the CAG also and some other community members helped us frame a 90s party. Maybe some of you attended that party as we are leading up building engagement toward this design process. So that is now the phase that we are in. The CAG or the community advisory group will go with us not only through this design process, but also through when we get to answering some of these questions around how this center serves as a catalyst for economic development in this corridor and affordable housing development in this corridor that is also um, accessible for legacy residents um, and neighbors to participate in. So we want to keep that group sort of tight. We want to keep that group also representative of folks from the west side, representative users of the center, representative of stakeholders that we want to bring in the center, for instance, to offer trauma-informed care to uh, like add programming essentially that might come up here tonight. But folks who are a part of that group are, are neighborhood members, are folks who are users of this centers, are business folks in this, uh, this neighborhood who we want to come back to the corridor. Um, and I, they've already been participating in some ways. So unfortunately, it, it's hard for us all to get out during the pandemic and we certainly appreciate all of your participation. We hope that you will also encourage more people to come if it's not to these public events, please engage online. So there are many reasons why people may not have elected to participate tonight. There are three other opportunities. We hope that you'll participate in them and again, continue to invite people out. So, I, I just switched to this slide if you want to go ahead and we can just switch it around a little bit. Okay. So if you want to go through oh, and explain to them. Thanks. So this um this describes a little bit of the engagement approach that we've taken. So best practice in um, urban planning, architecture, this sort of community design building work is to have a CAG or a, a group of champions that can work with you, that you can sit down and have personal relationship or uh, have a more of a personal relationship with, build trust, and also talk about things that might be more difficult to talk about in larger forums like this. So uh, we held our first community advisory meeting after that, that really fun 90s party. Oh, sorry. After that really fun 90s party on November 15th, we then followed that up with the guiding principles. Thanks to Aaron, he produced these beautiful, uh, he was able to compile that information into these beautiful graphic displays that we'll be able to discuss tonight. And we are at our first public meeting. Our next community advisory group meeting will be on January 27th. So in a sense, every time we have a public meeting with you, we then touch base with the CAG and we say, what did you hear? What can we address? What can we start to strategize together to move things forward, right? Um, and, and then we'll, uh, after we meet with our community advisory group, we'll bring some of that feedback back to the second public meeting, yeah, uh, which will happen on February 10th. Hey, we can't hear nothing you saying over here. Sorry, I'll try to speak up soft voice. Second meetings happen on February 10th. So that will culminate the design process. So after February 10th, we'll then move into the schematic design, which is when Meticulous comes back and they're able to articulate to us, okay, this is what we heard. Here are some of the schematic designs that we were able to come up with. What do you think? Did we hit it? Did we nail it? 
If not, how can we go back to the design process and reiterate? So we're going to be, I'm calling this a bit of an engagement blitz because we're getting through this a lot faster than we would like to, especially during this surge, especially during this pandemic. But I have to tell you, I'm thrilled about the opportunity that we have here as a planner and somebody that's been watching city government from a long time, from also the perspective of the clerk's office, it, it's hardly ever that you have a project that is fully budgeted. So we have the opportunity here to really dream big and to also, I think, have some, some consolation in the fact that the budget's there. Maybe we might need more budget, budget and that's where all of you and our CAG will also help us to leverage other relationships and begin fundraising and all of that because we want to be able to really implement all of the wonderful ideas that you guys are going to come up with. So I hope that you guys are as excited as I am and that you will engage throughout the entire process, whether that's online, we have surveys, you can write us a letter. There's so many ways. So um, please share the postcards with also people who live in this neighborhood or who may be users of the center that are elderly or shut in and may not be able to come out and um, share some of their feedback. So please do that as well. Thank you. Uh, two comments. You said you had meetings previous to that. For us, that wasn't there. Wouldn't it be uh, kind of good that you had those meetings to bring us up to speed where there's no duplication? And number two, where's the mayor? Jordan, would you like to come up and represent the mayor's office? So we do have notes from our CAG meeting. We can give them to you. Yeah. So a part a part of the the presentation tonight is to go through that information. So we we're gonna get to it. We we, we got we gotta get we wanna entertain all of the questions and everything, but we will get to it. So just, just so everybody, th there is no, especially, I'll tell you this, especially with meticulous involved, there's no behind the scenes shady stuff going on. We, we, so part of the process is you all have to be patient with us as we go through the process. Awesome, awesome. I'm just going to reiterate that this is a blitz of engagement and y'all gonna to have to be real patient with us on the feedback. We're moving through this process much quickly than much more quickly than usual, but obviously tonight is a good display of the engagement and we hope that continues. So again, just keep keep pushing that, um, but it's going to be a blitz. So so be patient with us through it and keep showing up. You know, any for for those of you who don't engage in building projects every day and that's a part of what you do, it can sometimes become frustrating because it, it is a lengthy process. This is not something that's going to materialize overnight. There's the design process, there's this engagement process, then there's the construction process. The goal is to have continuity to have consist have everyone engaged from beginning to end and a part of what uh, Alkina just uh, communicated in this engagement approach is you have to have a plan and strategy to get people to come out and even participate because if if we run if we <laughs> if 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 we actually engage you in every meeting, every discussion, it would be too much. And we, we, we would have participation to fall off. We've done it for years, so I know. It, to get commitment, even, just think about how many people are in the community and how many people are here tonight. It, it will wear you out. So our job and our goal 
is to get organized in a way that would give everybody time to fit into the schedule to come and provide input and feedback so we can have you the whole marathon, not, not the 100 meter dash. We need you for the entire marathon until we're cutting the ribbon and everybody's having fun in the new center. So that's, that's the outline of what this schedule consists of. And I'm going to go back one slide to share with you the, the overall process. I kind of went through it just real quick, but we are in phase one. Phase one is 19 weeks. 19 weeks consists of establishing your vision, the goals of the community, the, the program, what considerations for what do you want in the space? What did you enjoy from the past? What do you want that's missing? And to brainstorm and dream and vision about all these different things for consideration in the new facility. And then we'll go into creating site plan and what the building starts to look like conceptually. And all of that, we will bring back to you and say, as Alkina said, did we did we hear you? Did we get it right? No, if not, throw a dart at it, throw tomatoes at it, whatever it is, tear it, rip it, and then we will take your feedback and continue to go through the process until we get it right. And that's that's a part of this this journey. Phase two, so that's phase one, getting all of your ideas, your visions, your dreams, everything about this this campus and this new facility, and taking all of that. And that's why we're, we don't even uh, pick up a pencil and sketch and draw anything because we want to hear what you have to say first. We want your heart first and have that inform what we begin to design. So that's a part of the phase one. Phase two is when we get start to get into more of the, the technical documents and starting to uh, uh, put it into the, the engineering and the developing of the architecture and the site elements more. And then phase three would be uh, the finalization of all the construction documents that would go to the contractor. We'll, uh, it'll go out to bid, selection of contractor that hopefully aligns with what was discussed earlier as best as possible. And then we go into the duration of construction. So though that's the, the entire process. And we want everyone we see here tonight to be engaged in the process and there at the finish line to celebrate that, that whole process. All right, so now we will go into, we'll have a, a couple of uh, community reflection, yes. community relations standing member and this is my third term working with the council with the council and I wanted to give a huge shout out to councilman Henry Davis because he really worked really hard to ensure funding and as all as each member have but this is his district and I know personally from working with each and every one that he did his best and it needed to be it needs to be noted that he did and his, his in, in his absence because he is at the council meeting Thank you for sharing. We'll we'll have Brother Maurice Scott come up and share a few words. Good evening, everybody. Thank you everybody for coming out. I just wanted to, I, I, you know, I kind of think about this like uh, uh, we all know about Big Mama and going to Big Mama house and being able to eat that soul food Sunday. And sometimes when you get there, the meal ain't prepared. So you got to be a little patient and sometimes she's going to say, what you want, baby? What you want to eat? And sometimes you might say, you know, you want that uh, hot water cornbread. You might want greens. You might want sweet potatoes. It's a little bit for everybody, but everybody going to get an opportunity to eat. The thing that's special about this place and what makes me excited about it, we all going to get an opportunity to eat. I first start coming to Martin Luther King Center in 1978. I was a little boy. And I grew up coming here every single day. Then I became an adult and I continued to come. Matter of fact, I started working here. And then I was here so much, my wife said, that's your second home. And as I thought about it, from a little boy, even to what my wife said, she was wrong. It wasn't my second home. It was my home. 
Martin Luther King Center, I was not part of it. It was part of me. Just like most of you, we have an opportunity to allow the new Dream Center to be part of who we are. Welcome home, everybody. Welcome home. We'll have Miss Stephanie Coleman. I'm going to piggyback off of uh, Mo talking about this being a home away from home. Today, the, the, the folks that set this up were guys that come and play basketball here every day. Um, we had a guy that said, I hadn't seen for a while. I said, I haven't seen you in a little bit. And he said, I've had to work every single day for the last six weeks. And this is my only day off. And I said, oh, so this is your only day off. And you decided to, you know, that this is where you wanted to be. And he goes, this is my home. Right. And that means something to me because this is my home. I'm here more, t more than I am anywhere else. And for somebody to have to work six weeks every single day to say, I finally get to go home, you know, because I've got a day off. That, that that really resonated with me today. And then he, after played th after he played three hours of basketball, helped guys set this, this space up. I have uh, teenagers that come here and will lounge around in our in our teen area, and they're laying there on their phone, charging their tablets and what what have you, um, just like they are at home. And so it's very important to me. This is very important to me. This is the most important part of this process. Is the people that consider this to be their home away from home, um, their refuge, um, that they get to come and have a say. Um, and again, like, like everyone has kind of iterated tonight, it, it's, it's really gonna be important that we all understand where we are in the process and to be patient. This is the first community meeting. So we're just getting started with getting you all's um, ideas and thoughts. So we do ask for that that patience and understand that we do understand that it's important that this is the home for everybody and that it matters to you just like it matters to us. OK, so now we will open this up to you. We will go into uh, an activity in which we would like for each and every person here to formulate or create your thought about what is one word that reflects your hopes and dreams for the MLK Dream Center campus. What's one word or, or phrase, one word that describes what are your dreams and hopes for what's being done here? So we'll open it up. And there's sticky notes on, on the table. It'll be helpful for us to make sure we, we get all of that information documented. If you can, you can say it out loud, but if you can also write it on the sticky notes so we can take it with us to put it into a document. Uh, mine was kind of, oh, sorry. My name is Mina, school bus driver, Sullivan School Bus Corporation. We are making, uh, we are here to make some decisions about this place. And most of the people that I'm here, most of them are not here, the youth. We might put a swimming pool here and they say, and they say, no, we wanted a gaming place. We might put a basketball court, they say they want a volleyball place. I think we should involve them too. If we don't, most of them will not come here. They'll still go out there where we don't want them. So that's just a suggestion for me. So we're also getting participants from the, the virtual meeting. And so far we have basketball, Basketball, walkable, resourceful, haven. So any, who's next? 
True empowerment. We have a team also. Safe place. Future. Future. Counseling place. All right. Everybody think of one. I'm coming around to everybody. You guys got one? One word to describe. Focal point for the neighborhood. Education. Education. Oh, the wow, wow factor. I love it. Welcoming. You guys got any words? Leadership skills. Economics. Teaching economics. Money. Arts. Activities. Inviting. Rescue. Square footage. Got to have some size with it. All right. On this side of the room, we got magnify what already exists. Cultivate childhood dreams and goals. So I think it's a great one. And tangible. Good job. For sure. For sure. We have some that participated in a, a previous meeting, the community advisory group meeting. Yes. Yes, so they are. We, and we're, we're inviting them out. We're going to have, uh, the, so the question was about getting the youth involved. So in addition to the community engagement plan, we are planning to have a specific session just for the youth as well. I just want to say this pretty light. <laughs> I want to say this really quick. Like, I'm not trying to be funny. I think it's excellent what y'all doing. But what's important for us to realize and, and, and to remember, like, they're here to help to serve what we're already doing in, in our community. Like, if we want to get young people involved, we gotta go, we gotta go get involved with young people. Ain't nobody coming in here to babysit for us. I don't care how big of a structure it is. I don't care. I don't care how much it costs. If we don't build us. The, the, they can build and it will be empty. And so, so it's like, I love meetings like this, but 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 I but I feel like this is like, there won't be a great dream center if there's not a great people. We are the great people, y'all. And so what that means is we can't wait until it's done. Open the Bible. Say so you can't put new wine into old wine skin. You know, so like, how do we adjust our mentality in our wine scans right now? Are we going to sit back and wait so many weeks and months? Or can we begin to really get on board and do something right now? How many of us are coming to the King Center right now? How many of us are working with the young people right now? If we choose to, if we choose to wait until they deliver a package, they can't deliver what we want to see. Because our young black boys can follow all the rules and they still get shot. And our daughters are too. So we have got to become that change and we got to start doing it right now. So as we're changing on this side and the change come from that side, we meet in the middle. That's why we need a true empowerment. It's like, so, so as, as, as the center is getting built, I guess the question I have is what can we do to help build us? Because some of us don't realize how powerful we are or how influential we can be. How do we stretch the mentality of the community so that we can blend into this stretched, you know, idea of what the Dream Campus can be? All I'm going to say is amen to that, too. But the, the point well taken. A building is, is a building. We, we talk about that about the church. The church is not the building. We, we're the church. So it's the same thing. The center is, is not the building. It's all the memories. It's all the activities. It's everything that has been built and done through the years together as people. Society and the community and neighborhoods are not going to change because you get new houses, new businesses. It's the people because you can create new stuff and, and tear it down and destroy it immediately. 
because of a messed up mentality. So the it, it starts with us. It starts with us. So great point. And the future is going to be because of every single thing that each of you do in the community. So when we when we're thinking and envisioning where does it start? It starts with the participation now and doing the things that you desire to have transformational when the new building arrives. And then you just do more of it to continue to transform the communities. And that's the power of the people. That's the power of the community. So again, the things you're thinking about right now and sharing with us, the, these one words, these thoughts, these dreams, these visions, these are elements, these are things to help us to get to something that hopefully we take and transform your words, your thoughts, your passion into a physical space. And that you are going to take ownership of from today and guide that process. So keep sharing those passionate things because that's what's going to mean the most at the end of the day. All right. So well it's, still, it's still open. It's still open. We've got one more for the side of the room. We've got evolution. Evolution. What are we missing? What yeah, are we? 100,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And we know the dream, we want to be 300,000 square feet. Are they going to give us a history of where we're at so we can plan for it? Or Great question. Because I, I don't know. I don't even know. Great question. So the, the question is will we provide a summary of? what's already existing, all of the spaces, the program, the size of this facility, and, and share that so that you can know what you do and don't have. And the answer is yes. We'll, uh, we'll be able to show side-by-side -side comparison for every existing. Now, as far as the programs, I, I think we can get a summary of all the programs that exist so that it's clear. Uh, I don't, it might be one already, uh, Stephanie, is there already a list of all the programs provided? Yeah, okay. So, yes, we'll be able to provide that, yes. It's not here in this presentation, but yes, we'll be able for the, it's that February 10th, February 10th, we can have that. It's still open. Joshua. Um, I guess my question would be, we're having a meeting and you're looking for community feedback. What is it that you're looking for? Because it appears to me that you guys are not you per se, but maybe the city, they're going to do what they want to do. They're going to build it the way they want to build it. So if we say don't be, build a pyramid, y'all going to listen to us and say, hey, don't build a pyramid, don't build it flat, don't do this. So what type of engagement are y'all looking for from the community and what do our opinion, I guess, how are you going to consider our opinions like what do we what say do we really have so maybe again that question may not be for you but it, somebody from the city that's here that maybe can answer that because i really don't get it we're sitting here we're listening to you um you you opened up a discussion but we're really not discussing anything in my opinion it's like y'all have a plan y'all got this cag meeting y'all got this cag team or whatever it is is going on what type of feedback are you looking for from us as community members Beautiful question, just to make it clear. So does everybody see this? This pen represents what will be drawn, and I am the holder of it. So the city's not the holder of what will be drawn. They've hired us to draw exactly what you tell 
me to draw tonight. Okay. Dome. Write, write it down. A dome. Now, just because you tell me what you want doesn't mean it's going to look exactly what might what you think it might look like. Our job and the reason they've hired us is to interpret and to get as many of the ideas as best as possible into this. Brother Mo said, everybody want to eat something. Now, it's going to be a buffet, but you, I, you have to understand it's a process of taking those ideas and putting it into something that everybody can eat from. So I want to hear, and when I say I, I mean it represents our design team. I'm not the only one doing it. We have a great team assembled. But in order for us, the reason we did not show up here tonight with a big piece of paper showing you, surprise, this is what it's going to look like, is because we said this to the city. We are not drawing anything until we hear what the community says they want. We, we, don't, we don't want to make up something for you. This is your facility. And that's our passion is to do what the community wants. Now, we are your expert that we're going to, we hope that we're building trust with you, that you will trust that what you communicate, what you tell us, we'll take and we'll go and we'll then start to do what we've been trained to do and create hopefully a wow factor world class design and we'll bring it here. And again, I said this earlier, we're going to put it up here and if need be, I'll bring a, a, a bucket of tomatoes and I'll also bring uh, fireworks and spray horns that We'll get either, I love it, and fireworks are going off, and we can keep developing it, or you say, that is horrible, I don't like it, start over, whatever, whatever it is. But it will be your voice. It will be your voice. It will be your voice. I want you to realize it will be your voice that creates this outcome. Yes. Yes. So there's the the city has a website that constantly receiving input and feedback. We're going to be so over here on the wall. Uh, the, these boards are set up to stay here through the entire process, so that not just those that come for events like this, but every person that comes and uses this facility every day of the week has an opportunity to write down thoughts and provide feedback. Uh, on these boards with the notes and everything. And uh, there's going to be a survey. Oh, yeah, build, build the dream. Here it is. So build the dream uh, notes for providing different ways to engage. So there is visit www.southbendindiana.gov. Build the dream. Then there's technology. Want them to come to our space, we got to go into their space. So I was just wondering if there's, if there's ways or tools or resource tools that y'all utilize to do that. Yeah, so uh, let me see. Akina, I'm not sure if there are anything you want to talk about outside of this, what the city does. I know we, there were every door, every household within certain radius within this community, information went out about this project as as one effort and then again we're planning to have a, a youth specific event we haven't dictated where it's going to be it, i mean we could look to doing it in a school uh it's possible uh so we can we can look to if you have ideas i mean share with us ideas uh we're not saying we have all the answers we we want everyone here to share your thoughts about how to engage how to get input where to get input so that it can add value to the process.
And how much land has been acquired for this project? So what what type of space are we working with? with it's this site. Just this site this all site. the way to the corner to Bursal Street? Yeah. That's it? Yes. To Orange or Colfax back there? Yeah, all right. this, this entire site. All right, gotcha. Um, I have a question regarding the project team and perhaps this is kind of um, premature, but could you explain exactly the two South Bend project teams that are part of the project team, DLZ and BS Engineering, what impact will they have with this development? Yes, they're, so they are the engineers. So VS Engineering, they're looking more at the site. So they'll the, when we lay out the parking lots, any improvements to uh, let's call it the the horizontal, the the what we walk on. That's the civil engineering. And then DLZ, when we create the architectural shape and form, they'll do the structure. So the things that hold up the building and the mechanical engineering and plumbing. Okay, because I was out on DLZ's website. And I looked at their leadership. There are 27 men, four women, and it appeared to be out of those 27 men, two of them are African American. Um, so that is a concern if we're trying to bring in minorities to do the work when DLZ's record, their leadership team, I'm not sure. I mean, I would think you would have more leaders than that if we're going if they're gonna be a part. And so the city has Yeah, so he, this is across the country. So meticulous, you see brother Ron Love, he's with meticulous and in the country itself, and this is one of the passions of ours as minority architects, in the country there's less than 2% African American registered architects. Ron and I are two of them. So, that that's that's an accomplishment you know if, if we get the time i can tell you my story of coming from the projects of new jersey i had to go to college for two years because i ran out of money i went to class every day every day not enroll because i didn't have the money and i stuck it out so that one day i could be here to help communities like this the tears that i cried so they're, they're just not enough companies to have the type of representation in every company. But the city was intentional for this project to bring in a company like Meticulous. We have not only just African American, we have 13 different country nationalities in our, co in our company. That, that, and that's unheard of in a lot of companies, especially here in America. So. The city was intentional about it. Now, it's very difficult to get 100% minority companies to do a project. It's very difficult. So uh, even though you, the, the leadership of that particular company is wrong, our company is all African-American black men from the hood. All right. I might have this little nice little suit on tonight, but I, I can switch it up if we need to. I can switch it up if we need to, you know, it's, but anyway. <laughs> we, we'll go question here and then come back to the front. Um, why can't y'all just add on and steady tearing down? That's a good question. Oh my God, no. And what, what's going to happen to the kids that feel like home here? Where, why, where are they going to go? Like, yeah, that's a great question. Why not just add on here? And for this to feel like home, wh ha where, where are the kids going to go to feel like home? So our job and our goal for as designers is to help take the essence, the core, the passion, the love that's been poured in through the years from this facility and have it go into the new facility. So that means we're gonna be creative and look at different elements of what's here now and take it and put it in the new facility and be creative in that aspect. But the reality is with the investment the city is making, take advantage of it. We can't, we can't hold on to old things, like the, the brother just talked about the scripture, old wine scans and trying to put, in, you can't do it, it'll bust. They, for what you want to do in this community, you take advantage of the investment. You only get this investment maybe every 50 years. 
Okay. So take advantage of it, and we are going to do our best to use certain things of this center to integrate and to put it into the, the new facility as best as possible. Of course, oh, let me come here and then we'll, okay. we'll come back. Okay. So. Okay, I have just a couple of questions for you. First of all, the budget. Did you say it was going to be $11 million for this particular building? Yes, for as of tonight, yes. Okay, so this becomes the heart of our neighborhood. Yeah. What about the arteries leading up to the heart? What are you going to do about those streets? Yeah. I can't see you plopping the 11 million here and then you go around the corner and it looks like it looks. Agree. And this the city does have citywide master plans in place to address that. So there are plans to, to help beautify streets and paths and connect mm -hmm. from here all the way over to the mm -hmm. campus. Okay. And then my other question, um, kind of leading up to what, what the one lady was asking about, the architectural firm. I mean, maybe some programs could be incorporated where we expose the youth to those kind of fields. Architect, labor, Amen. trade. Um, we did do something like that, and I know Indy has had something like that, but DLZ was part of it, and they actually gave money to Washington High School to bring the youths in after school to, to um, do some architectural things. And then my one word that I wanted to add was relations. Relation. Thank you. So let, let me, we're going to go here, then here. But I, I want to get her first. She's been, she's been waiting for a minute. Thank you. That's a beautiful point. The last thing we want to do is do patchwork on something to save a few dollars. You don't, we don't want to do that as a process. And for the last point, it is definitely a passion of ours to give exposure to as many youth, black youth as possible that we didn't have. My only example of an architect where I grew up was Michael Brady on the Brady Bunch for anybody who ever knows. And, and I didn't even really know what that was. So for for the communities we grew up, we grew up in. How would you even know if I was walking down the street that I'm an architect? You, you wouldn't even you wouldn't even think about. Well, and then then you if I say I'm an architect, most people, the first thing they say is so where you build stuff. Like that most so it's an education process and that is a part of the process where we engage the youth and share with them so that they can become exposed to what an architect does. All of the we have numerous people in our firm that go to schools and, and do presentations and, and do uh, mentoring to give that type of exposure and, and we're proud of doing that. Finally, finally. A hip hop commercial would be good. Hip hop commercial to get attention. And on WUBS and on TV. TV. Yeah. And then, oh. like, $11 million. Okay. Like, is it all for the building or some for staff? Some for this? Uh, it's not for staff salaries or any. It's, it's for this project. It's $11 million dedicated to building this project. Period. It's, yeah, it's not divvying it up to other supplies and you no, know, it's purely for this project. Okay, any other questions? One word, I don't think everybody went. I'm not leaving, nobody's leaving to go watch the championship game until I hear one word. So let's get it going. Yes.
No, no, no. We, we, it, it, there is actually no board. No, no, no. no. There's no board. Yes. They, I mean, it's, it's similar to this group, just a smaller knit group that we want to make sure before we present anything to you that it makes sense. Yeah. So it. No, no. They, there's no. They vote on. Uh, they they vote on uh, decisions and then get presented to you. It, it's not that. No. You can trust me. I'll, I, everybody here can trust me. I'm, I put my word, my company. I am one. I am one of the four owners of Meticulous, and I'm telling you, you can trust. I'm Damon. Damon Hewlin. Write it down. Take a picture. Take it home with you. Damon. Yes. Okay. Swimming pool. Put it on the list. Oh. Now. Now. Again, I'm taking notes, but again, I can't promise you a swimming pool because that's a. a most people don't realize and understand how much it takes to take care of a swimming pool. So we might need to let the, 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 the VPA, Venue Parks and Arts, talk about the swimming pool. I'm going to take notes. I'm going to take notes. But I know several projects, everybody wants a swimming pool. And then you might have one, two people go swim in the swimming pool and they paying for it. So, but anyway, we'll take it as a note. And and see what what ha what can happen. Um, let me come here, and then we'll come here. Can you just spell your last name for the record? Definitely. So my name is Damon D A M O N. Last name Hugh Lynn H E W L I N. That about the swimming pool because a lot of our children drown every year. So they need to know how to swim. And we need a swimming pool in our neighborhood. They took, they took the swimming pool we had at Kennedy Park over by Kennedy School. There used to be a swimming pool there, a public swimming pool. So we What is the completion date for this? Woo! And the heat just rose on that. <laughs> no, what we're what we're looking at is, uh, let me see. I, let me let me see. Did we put that down? I know we had one. The completion date. No. The, oh man, we haven't even gotten to you yet, Aaron. <laughs> okay. It is. I want to see if I can remember it, but it's the. Built completion is 2023. I want to say September of 2023. I, I don't 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 beat me up if I'm off by a few months, but I believe it was somewhere around there. Yeah, late late 2023. And we're looking at. Uh, uh, you know what? Hey, I'm going back, going way back.
So um, a mural, Lincoln School. L Linden, I say Linden. I thought you said it. L I N D E N. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I have a uh, two part. One of the thing, one of the questions that um, that I stopped at the University of Notre Dame here. We always have where we got a professor who has a research project. And they look and they come to the community and they find somebody that can match the project. We was able to get Notre Dame to see it a little differently and saying we the community needs stuff done and we need research done and that we find a professor to be able to do the research. I love the fact that you come into the community to get the ideas to bring it back to develop what's supposed to happen. That's really how it's supposed to go. Um, in the process of this being developed, we're looking at 2023. A lot of our youth and adults use the facility. Where will be a standby place for them to be there to attend while this is being developed? That is a part of the planning process for the site. So the question, the question was, what's going to happen for the uh, people who use this facility while the new facility is being built? So all of that will be determined on how we, and where we even place the building. So we, we again, we haven't drawn and thought about anything it's we're going to come up with that idea based off of uh city planning the best use of this site what do we want on the site do we still want baseball softball do we want something else so all of that right now we don't have the answer but we will have a phasing plan that will uh say how the the facility or will transition from being used now and, to, and while the construction is going on Definitely uh, important that the invitation comes from the community versus outside in. It's coming from inside out. Uh, I remember years ago, we used to come and have uh, roller skating for all ages for kids. And I would like another whole new, new floor for just roller skating. That'd be a good activity to keep the youth out, out, out the streets and stuff. Something, you know, something for all ages, different times, different days, a uh, roller skating area. Okay, roller skating. Yes, same question. At this point, we, we don't even know if this will be operational when we build the new building next to it, or if we're going to build it on the corner. So we have to look at what's going to be the plan. So the question is, what's going to happen with the, the usage of where are the people are going to go when the new building's being built? And that is going to be based off of how we develop the site, which as of today, we don't have a drawing to say what's what's going to happen. So, but once we create the plan, we will definitely have uh, a transition plan for where's everybody going to hang out, play basketball, do the programs while the new facility. It, if we build it next to it, I can tell you now this will stay operational until the new one is built. Then you go into the new one. Then we tear this one down and do the parking lot. So that's you know one option. If if we build on the corner then we have to come up with a strategy to say, OK, where is going to be the temporary location? Or can we do it in phases or, or whatever? So we'll, we'll have to look at that and study it and come up with a, a plan with everybody. Right. 
is already mindset. So what if our dreams expand beyond mindset? Are you gonna be able to accommodate some that may greater than from virtual poverty? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's a property line now. Are we stuck to only be in that our area? Whatever we dream before you determine the size of our dream. Good question. So the the question is, what happens if the dream is bigger than what we have available to do? And then, which is typically what we actually want to have happen is you're just with no boundaries, no limitations. And then it's so what typically happens in this process is you dream of far out things and then it's going to be up to us as the designers to figure out how to take the essence of what now if you say give me you know a stadium and and, uh, an aquatic center and then you know then there's going to be some hard discussions (laughs) we're going to have a few tough discussions to say all right we have 11 million dollars right now this is out of everything we've heard we're going to figure out how to get as much as possible in it and then through the process hope that maybe some more funds come in and we can add a few more things but typically so there's give and take in this process every one of us have to be flexible you have to be open and flexible if we get angry because every single thing doesn't we don't get everything we want it's it's going to be just a bad process i'll tell you that right now It's about us being open-minded and understanding that there's going to be some compromise, but we're going to do our best to get as much in from your dreams into the new development as possible. So I know we are at 731. Yeah, so I, I know there was a question about what happened in the previous uh session with the community advisory group but we we don't necessarily want to keep everybody here another 30 40 minutes going through some of the other yeah all right yeah i see your head shaking like no no the game come on in 30 minutes got to get dinner together anyway so uh just just know we have other information that we're going to share uh in the you want to come up there What um, my name is Aaron Perry. For those of you that I have not had the chance to meet yet, I oversee venues, parks, and arts. So uh, we've been doing a lot of projects the past several years. Maybe you've been keeping up with them. Some of them already been referenced tonight. We've learned a lot from those projects, and we get to apply all of that to this. And I think, uh, given that and your participation and input, it's going to make it one of the strongest projects yet. Um, part of what we did at one of the last meetings was kind of talk about why we want to do this even to begin with. And we, we don't have time. I, again, I, I'm seeing people eat more and more snacks. That's your dinner right now is the chips. You know, we don't have time to go through it right now. We did list them right here. If you're interested in staying and I'll stand over here and talk you through them tonight, we'll make sure there's time to go through on the next agenda. What we did was we just started asking the question, why? Why do we want to do? How do we know this is going to be successful? Maybe we can't do every single thing that everybody kind of mentions in the meeting, but if we measure it up against the why do we want to do this to begin with, I think we should be having a very impactful, very successful project when we cut the ribbon in late 2023. So uh, with that said, I- I'll stay by and walk you through those. Anyway, that's interested right now. Uh, we'll also put them on the website. All this presentation will be on that website, selfandion.gov slash build the dream. The link's in the chat. Um, check it out. It's on your postcards. There's also a survey on that website that you're going to be able to fill out and uh, give us some feedback about some of the things that we're already talking about uh, here as well. So I I think I'll flip through these and then um, let maybe Damon wrap it up. Thanks, Aaron. So next steps, we'll take all of your feedback from tonight, all of the questions, all of the feedback from the community advisory group, and then go into uh, 
creating information that would start to inform the big picture ideas for what we can start to look at as far as design for this project. And then we'll come back on the, the next public meeting and share some, some big picture ideas with you as we, we dream together. Yes, thank you so much to Damon and Meticulous. They are incredible partners and are going to continue to be incredible partners throughout this process. Because we didn't make it through the complete agenda and we had a lot of questions, which means people probably have a lot to say, I want to definitely direct you to either call 111 311 where you can leave a message regarding various programs that you would like to see. The programs is what helps him design the space that we need to see. So the, the one word exercise was to help start getting you guys talking to get to that point, but I feel like y'all must be already ready. So please call 311. Please fill out the survey, which there are some open-ended questions in there as well. Please, if, if you're comfortable writing, like you can write us a hard letter, or if you have you know, a grandparent that's more interested in writing a hard letter, engage, engage, engage. So I just don't want people to feel like this is going to be the only chance. And please come back to the other public sessions where we will get more into that program piece that's going to inform his design. So thank you. And thank you all for coming. This was really great. Every session is going to be new information presented. Yes. So like they, everybody here needs to be at the next meeting and the meeting after that, right? So yes. It's not going to be duplicated information. Correct. No. So correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so just just so everybody is aware, this we're not going to be repeating the same information at the next one. It's going to be more information, new updates, uh, concept thinking for the design. So please come back to each of the, the next meeting and then the following meeting and bring people, bring at least three people with you and, and tell everybody about it and bring as many people as possible. Thank you. Thank you. As well, I am 46. 46 years old. I know I, I might have a little baby face, but uh, I, I got a few. Yes. Okay. How are you doing? I didn't recognize you at first. I know. You're I, know. Nasty, I, I, you I know. I know. I know. I know. I'd be Thank like, you. huh? Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I really feel like y'all should look this up like Netflix. I ain't like, it's super complicated trying to get people to go to any site like that. You got, if, if somebody can do something stupid on a video that go viral, it got to be a better way for this. Yeah. If y'all really want participation, I think I need to transform that. It, it looks different. It looks different if you want to engage with what it's saying. I, I agree. We got to be more creative yeah. with that. Hey, how you doing, young man? What's up, buddy? How you doing? You all right? So you just got engaged, huh? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was my